Hello and welcome, this is Dawn. In today's video, I've got some brand new honeybee products to share with you that are a must have. Now, if you love the birds and the wildflowers as much as I do, you are really going to enjoy these cards. So first off, let's get started by looking at some of those new products. Now there's a lot of good stuff in this release, but I immediately dove into their lovely layers. I love the lovely layers series. If you remember last winter, they released the winter birds, which had this adorable chickadee and the cardinal in it. Now that chickadee is still my all time favorite. I'll even be using him today, but this time around they've released the lovely layers spring birds. And in this set you get a uh, bluebird that's in flight. Love it. And then you get a little Robin as well. Cannot wait to use this one. Now, along with that, you can pair this with branches. You gotta have something to set the bird on, right? So they've released the Lovely Layers Cherry Blossom and the Lovely Layers Dogwood. Now, these are so much fun to play with. Again, as you will see today, I'm gonna create two cards with that. And then of course you can have some birds without a nest, right? So we've got a little nest there. And then of course, a new set of Lovely Layers Greenery. Now this is their spring greenery but you can honestly use it all year long. And the other great thing is that you can pair these with all of the other things in the Lovely Layers series. So from here on out, I'm gonna drop the Lovely Layers thing and I'm just gonna say the, the name of the thing because that's a mouthful. <laughs> all right, let's get into our card making. All right, the first card is going to feature the Lovely Layers Spring Greenery and the Spring Birds. Now we are going to be doing a lot of die cutting, so I'm just gonna skip through that part. And I'll have a link below and maybe in the cards here that will link to a video with all of my tips and tricks when doing a lot of die cutting. Okay, so the spring greenery has all of this greenery in it, but it also has two large flowers in it. You've got this baby's breath or possibly an allium or an agapanthus, and then you've got something that looks more like salvia. So I've pulled out a bunch of shades of Concord and Ninth card stock that I know all will go well together and that I will most likely end up using. They're my favorites, my go-tos. So I've pulled out several greens. I like to mix my greens and then a couple of colors so that I can create some, some different color salvia. And I will have everything linked below if you're curious about any of the specific colors. When I know I'm going to be doing a lot of repetitive die cutting, I like to pull out this little bitty buzz cutter and I will just start die cutting away. Um, I will pull out one shade of say the green and then I will cut a whole bunch of each of the elements from the, that green and then I'll move on to say the sprout and then I will do the same thing and I will keep going through all of the dyes die cutting several of each color. This way I have a lot to play around with and while I'm making my arrangement I don't have to stop and die cut more and they won't go to waste. I will use them. So I'm going to again spare you watching me die cut and we're gonna move ahead to where I have a whole bunch of things die cut out. There are two flowers in this um, greenery set. You have the large baby's breath here and then you have that salvia. You'll cut out the base in green and then you'll cut out your flower heads. Now this one can be confusing. If you have all of those little shapes mixed up together and just sitting on your desk, you have to figure out which one goes where. So what I found to be the easiest was to either leave the die cut pieces in the cardstock or if they're on the plate, leave them on the plate exactly as they were die cut. They are set up in exactly the same order and arrangement so that they can easily just be transferred to the base. So here I've put down some honeybee um, liquid adhesive and now I'm using my crystal katana to just pick up each little flower head and place it where it goes. You can see there that they're laid out in the exact same order as they are on the flower. So here I'm easily able to just pick up and place, pick up and place, and just keep moving along until all of them are in the right spot. Now, if some of yours fall out or they don't stay in the same order when you die cut them, just take your negative piece that you die cut from and arrange them back where they go into those little uh, negative spots like I've done with the purple there, and then you can easily do this, just pick up and transfer each of the little flower heads into their area. I also wanted to point out that you could use these just as silhouette images or just use the base image if you cut them from white and wanna color them with say Copic markers or watercolor. Because there's all of this detail embossed into each of the little flower areas, 
it keeps it super interesting and you really don't have to use the top layer like I said, if you are planning on ink blending this or planning on coloring it with Copics, it could stand alone with just the base layer. Next, we're gonna to put together some of the salvia. So I've already put some of them down on my sticky mat and I'm just going to pick up the floral portion. This is really easy to line up, very self-explanatory. Put some liquid adhesive on the floral portion and then just adhere it to the base. It's the exact same size and shape as the base layer, so you can just fit it right over top and then you also have a little single bud, a little single flower that will go at the base area. And I'll just repeat this for all of my little pieces that I've die cut and I'll do it in several different colors so I have some different shades to play around with. And I'll put those to the side and now I'm gonna do my bird. Now I'm gonna be using the blue bird here so I've pulled a couple shades of cardstock in blues, white, and orange and then I will die cut all of my pieces and we can start assembling. Again, I'm gonna be using liquid adhesive to adhere all of these. I just find it the quickest and easiest way to do it. Plus, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room so that you can make sure all your pieces are lined up correctly. Um, if it grabs too quickly, uh, sometimes it'll get stuck and then you are stuck with where it is and it could be off, could be off just a little. <laughs> so the liquid adhesive gives you just that little bit of wiggle room. I'm gonna use my Sweet Petunia sticky mat here. I like to use that to assemble things. I've started with the dark layer, the dark blue for my base layer. Then I've put in the white. This is gonna be the belly of the bird, like I mentioned. And then we are going to layer the lighter blue on top of that. Now, if you don't have several shades of the same color of cardstock, you could easily take one shade of blue and then add Versamark to it or a blue ink to it to make it darker. Or you could take white pigment ink and blend that over top of it to make it lighter. So you could do definitely one shade of blue for both of these. And I actually, that's what I ended up doing ultimately. Um, I thought there was too big of a jump in color contrast here between the blues. So what I did was I used the lighter blue and then I just ink blended the lighter blue color with a little bit of blue ink to make that base layer darker. But here I wanted to show you that you can definitely layer different colors together and show you how the bird goes together because it's super, super simple. Another thing that I really like about these dies is there is a lot of detail, a lot of embossing detail built into the die. So it adds a lot of interest so you can get away with fewer layers. So you get all of that detail, but in a very simplified, simplified version. Now the eyes and the feet are tiny, so if you wanted, you could use a Copic marker or a Copic pen to add those in. You could also use um, Nuvo drops. We're gonna move on now to the Robin. And I wasn't exactly sure what colors to use for the Robin. So if you're ever struggling, just use Google and look up the images um, of the thing that you're trying to make on your phone. Super easy. Um, I found this little one, I guess this would be the European Robin. Uh, our robins, the American robin, I believe, is more black. So I decided to go with the brown, the orange, and the uh, cream or gray chest sometimes. So that's what I decided to run with. And then once I've got all my pieces die cut, I can go ahead and start my assembly. Again, there's not a ton of pieces, so it's really easy to assemble. And I've left all of this in here, and I'm showing this in this video specifically to share how to layer up each of these dies. Now, all of our cards in the end are going to, they're going to be extremely die heavy. So the main part of these cards is assembling the dies. And I figured it would be helpful to have a video out there that kind of shared how to layer up all of these in one video so it's easy to find and you can bookmark it for future reference. So like I mentioned, we're making several cards today, so I need several birds. So I went ahead and made quite a few of these, and I will even be using some of the chickadees from the winter birds. Uh, you guys know, I already told you, he's my favorite. So of course he had to make an appearance today. <laughs> all right, now that those are all done, it is time to move on to the card. I know, I know. Eight minutes in, nine minutes in, and you're like, Dawn, are we gonna make a card? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> Okay, speaking of said card, here we go. Now I've already arranged some florals here. Um, I What I did was I created a larger bouquet on the left and a smaller bouquet on the right. And you'll notice that I have them flowing off the edge of my card base. 
Now this is a technique that I do a lot. I will either let my uh, arrangement or my main elements bleed off the edge or I will have them coming from the edge into the card. This is especially great for large die cuts. Uh, sometimes you think, oh, this die cut's so big, the only thing I can do is kind of smack, dab it right in the center of the card, make it a focal point. It's not always true. Here you can see I've created those two bouquets. They're gonna come in from outside of the card, from the outside in, and this is going to make them appear smaller. They're not gonna look so large. If I put one of those right in the middle of the card front, it looks huge. But if I have it coming into the card from off the edge, it really manages that size. So now it's time to work on something for the background. And for that, we're gonna be using the W plus nine um, Ironworks background die. I love this die and it's going to look beautiful with these garden-like scenes. So I've, I'm gonna run that through my Platinum Six and cut that out. And I've already picked up my arrangement on press and seal. If you're unfamiliar with the press and seal hinge technique, again, that will be in that die cutting tips and tricks video that I'll have linked below. Now this die will, it's gorgeous. It's very intricate. Sometimes you might need a shim depending on your machine. Um, this is, I think I'm cutting 140 pound cardstock in the platinum six without a shim. And I'm able to get all of the pieces out. It cut through cleanly, but you'll wanna poke all of these out. This die is actually a lot of fun if you wanna do like a stained glass technique. It's so pretty. Oh, and it makes a beautiful shaker card as well. I've done a shaker card with this. But for here, we want it to emulate what it is, um, like an iron gate or uh, just the trellis look that it gives. That's going to be the perfect backdrop again for this almost like a macro shot into a garden. Now, I don't know about you, but I change my mind a lot while I'm card making, and sometimes that makes uh, for uh, hard transitions here in the video. So originally I thought I was gonna put this on a craft card base, but I decided to go with this uh, very light blue, and I believe this is Glacier from Spellbinders. Beautiful, beautiful, very light icy blue, and I thought it would look great uh, in the background here. It'd be almost like a sky. So this is what I decided to go with. I'm just adhering that um, Ironworks background die to my card base here. And then I could adhere all of my florals and my bird. And I'm adhering those florals directly to my card base. I am popping up very few areas. Some of those bigger leaves, I added a little bit of foam tape under them to pop them up a little bit, but for the most part, everything is just adhered flat. And then for the bird, I'm gonna use some um, honeybee foam tape for that as well. I lied, I'm using the scrapbook.com adhesives. Nope, I lied again. I'm using scrapbook adhesives. <laughs> I will have everything linked below. <laughs> but I'm sure you guys have your favorite adhesives, so no big deal. Okay, so now we're gonna flip this over and trim off any excess that's hanging over the edges, and then all we have to do is add our sentiment. And for that, I'm gonna be using another set from this new release. This is the Daisy Bouquet and the matching dye. This is a gorgeous set and I will be using this coming up here shortly, so um, stay tuned. But I'm gonna be using the, what did I end up, so happy for you. I think that's the sentiment that I ended up using from this one. We're gonna heat emboss that on the same blue cardstock that we used for the bird. This is gonna carry that color into three spots in a visual triangle on the front of our card. And for that, I'm using some Hero Arts embossing powder in white. Then I'll melt that with my heat tool and use the coordinating die from the Garden Bouquet die set that goes with that stamp set to die cut my sentiment. I'm gonna pop that up on some foam tape and then that will finish off this card. Now make sure you watch to the end because I have lots of parts and pieces left there and I did make another card featuring this design. Now let's move into the next cards. These both feature the Lovely Layers Dogwood and Cherry Blossom branches. These are absolutely gorgeous. I love how they turned out. So let's take a look at how to build these dies. Now these ones are a little more intricate and they have a few more layers. By far the easier one is the Dogwood. So if you are apprehensive about layering dies, I would start with the Dogwood and then the Cherry Blossom has a few more layers to some of the flowers. But for the most part, this dogwood here, you have the long stem and you can see all of this beautiful detail that it embosses. You could use just the stem, the base by itself, and it would still be gorgeous without any of the extra layers. 
Now the cherry blossom also has that large base layer and then you have all of the flowers and the leaves to layer on top. So here's a look at the dogwood. You have the base layer, the leaves, the flowers themselves, and the flower centers. That's it. So this one is super easy, but absolutely gorgeous. Look at all that detail. And then the cherry blossom here you can see, you have the base, the leaves, the base of the flowers, the centers of the flowers, and then some of them, two to be exact, have an extra petal on top. So this one has a few more layers, but absolutely beautiful. And you would approach both of these the exact same way. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna walk you through how to build this magnolia branch. I'm gonna start with the base branch and I've cut it here from brown. And you can see, like I mentioned, all of that beautiful detail. You could use this as is. You could do a tone on tone background um, and this would be absolutely beautiful. To save us some time, I've already done all of the die cutting. So I've die cut all of my flowers from white and then I've die cut all of the leaves from parsley from Concord and Ninth and all of the flower centers in Sprout. I've put these into little piles and now I've put down a My Sweet Petunia um, sticky mat. I've got my liquid adhesive here and my crystal katana and really I'm just gonna start assembling. You're gonna start with your leaves first, put down some liquid adhesive on, you can do it one by one, you can do it like I'm doing it. I like to just put down some liquid adhesive on all of the leaves first and then I'll use my crystal katana to pick up each leaf and put it into place. Now I like to start with the more odd shaped leaves first because it's easier to identify where they go. So here you can see I'm kind of like, where does this one go? Mm, I'm looking for the fat leaf and I'm like, all right, I think this goes here. And then I realize that, you know what, that one doesn't go there. So you'll see me here in a minute try to pick that up and move it. This is where I came up with my solution of looking for the odd shaped ones first. So you can see me here second guessing. I'm like, I don't think this one's right. And I, I was right, it wasn't right. So I, before that set, and before I had actually pushed that leaf down really hard, I went ahead and moved it. That's another tip. When I'm doing this, I will set the leaves down in the glue, but I won't actually press down. So you won't make the liquid glue. You can move it around and shimmy it around until you actually put pressure and press it down. So I like to just set them on it first. Then once I'm sure that everything is where it goes, I will pick it up and I will, I will press them into place. So here you can see, I'm just setting these down where they go using that crystal katana makes it super easy. If you have a jewel picker of any kind, I highly suggest using that. And then we can move on to the flower bases. And again, I like to just put down all of my adhesive and then come through, pick everything up and put them into place. This one's very fast to build. Now the reason that you'll want to start with your leaves is because some of your flowers will overlap your leaves. You'll notice that some of the leaves are tucked up under the flower just like they would be in nature. So you'll want to start with those leaves first and that way you can layer your flower on top like this one right here. And then after I'm done with the big flowers, I will come in and add the little buds. There's some little buds here on the branch. Now, the nice thing about these buds is they're all the exactly the same. So you don't have to fiddle around with making sure that you have the right one in the right place. They're all, they're all identical. So any one will fit anywhere. And then finally, we're gonna put in those flower centers. And again, doesn't matter which ones go where, they're all the same size. So just pop those right into the center and you are done with your branch. Now you could build these in any color that you want. I like to start off with something easy when I'm just getting to know the dye. So here I went with the traditional color, but I know these also come in pink, so you could try that as well. Okay, so now let's make a card with these. I've die cut one of those um, Ironworks backgrounds from Sea Glass cardstock, and I've got a Sea Glass background here to layer it onto. I wanted tone on tone, but I did want to set it apart just a little bit. So what I decided to do was take some sea glass ink here and we're going to ink blend a halo around the edges. 
So we're going to just come in, work some of that color from the edges in, making the edges a little bit darker and leaving the center lighter to create that almost glow. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me just a little deeper color in the background to set that lattice work off. And here you can see it's not super deep around the edges. It's very subtle, but it's definitely there. And when I lay this over top, you'll be able to see that it just, just separates them just enough. It doesn't look like a completely different color, but it does recess that background, gives a little bit of depth. I decided to go ahead and die cut another one of those ironwork backgrounds. Again, this one is from W plus nine. And we're going to stack that on top of each other just to give it a little bit more depth. And this will cast a natural shadow because it's, it's a little bit higher. It'll cast a shadow and make that look even more recessed. Now I'll arrange my, my little dogwood branches here, and then I'll adhere everything in place. And then I'll work on my sentiment. So here you can see everything's adhered down. And for the sentiment, I am going to use the, I'm lying. I didn't end up using this, but in the video, <laughs> you guys, I changed my mind a lot. So originally, my original plan was to use this garden bouquet stamp set. This is a new one from the Honeybee release, and I intended to do this sentiment, happiness is springtime blooms. Love that sentiment. And I really wanted to make it work. But in the end, this it ended up just being a little bit too small for my layout in the end, and you'll see here. So I ended up he heat embossing this in white on that sea glass card stock, and then the white was not bright enough. It was not enough contrast on that sea glass, so it was very hard. It wasn't um, very legible. It didn't stand out quite enough, and I needed some more drama. So I will show you what I ended up with here in the end. Now, I probably still could have made this work. It doesn't look bad looking back at it. Uh, a little ink blending with that sea glass over that sentiment would have deepened it up a little bit, and I think it could have worked. But ultimately, I like where it ended up. So I'm going to put this aside for a minute, and um, I'll come back to the sentiment, and we're going to work on filling out the rest of this background. Now, I have a lot of pieces left over from where I trimmed off the edges. So I'm going to work those back in to my design. Again, you can see I've coming just like the last design. I have my design coming from the outside of the card in, onto the card. So it's as if we're looking at a snapshot of a bigger scene. You can see me here. I'm still trying to make this sentiment work, you guys. <laughs> but I, all of the stuff that was hanging over the edge, I trimmed off. And now I'm going to make use of all of those trimmed off pieces. So here, I have this uh, flower here, it was trimmed off. I'm gonna glue a new flower on top of this. Since we trimmed that flower in half, I'm just gonna take another flower and glue it right on top of it. And now it will look like I have a whole flower. And because we have our design you know, off the edge, because it's coming from the edge into the card, I can fake it like it's another branch off in the rest of the scene that you can't see, right? So it's coming in at the bottom of the card. I'll add some more flowers here to make it look like it's part of a branch and then I'll add some leaves to it as well. And this is something that I do all the time. Pieces that I trim off of panels or pieces that I trim off of things I've colored, I will often bring them back onto the card on the opposite side and it's just a way to make use of all of your pieces and parts and really complete a design. So don't be afraid to play around with the parts that uh, are discarded. I also will end up just putting random leaves on this. So uh, right now I have all of the dark green parsley leaves. You can see up there in the corner, I've die cut some sprout leaves. Now that sprout's gonna pull in some of that uh, brighter green from the center of the flowers into the rest of the composition. So I'll just, I'm going to just sporadically place those around the design around the tree. They're not even going to be attached to the trunk in some spots and, or the branches. And that's going to be fine. It's just going to add that pop of that bright green. And it takes me a while sometimes to decide on this, you guys. I will hem and haw and try some things. It doesn't, things do not always come together in uh, the wink, the blink of an eye. Just, it just doesn't always happen like that. You have to experiment. You have to try things, right? 
So here I'm laying this flower on top of his feet. I didn't really like the way his feet were showing because they weren't really on a branch. So he was kind of floating there. I hid it behind a flower and you'll never know. So that was an easy fix. And I just finished filling out the background with those leaves and some more flowers. And then I actually made another card inspired by this one using the cherry blossom. So let's take a look at all of our finished cards. So for the first one, we used that bluebird. Now remember, all of these cards are gonna be using that Ironworks background die, and I think it is the perfect backdrop for these florals and birds. It just gives that whole garden vibe. I created our bouquets here. Both cards have the florals coming off of the card into the card. So that starts off of the card and comes into the card as if we've captured a snapshot or a macro shot in a garden. Here I, swip, I swapped out the chickadee for the bluebird, and for the sentiment, I just made it white on black to match the chickadee. Love how that turned out. Here's the final of our um, dogwood branch here. Love, love, love how this one turned out. Do you see what I mean? I think that that moments like the, Moments like these should be celebrated. That's a sentiment from that Daisy Bouquet stamp set. And I think it black, the white heat embossing on the black was perfect for this card. I think that that darker, bolder sentiment balanced the bird perfectly. So I decided to make another one using the uh, cherry blossom branch. And this one, I just, I took my inspiration from the background of the other one. I did all tone on tone here, and then all of the focus comes to that bird and the sentiment there. And again, I got to use that happiness is springtime blooms. I told you I was gonna be able to use it. <laughs> I love that sentiment. Again, that one is from the garden bouquet. All the other sentiments were from the daisy bouquet, and then we used the winter birds and the springtime birds, along with the new spring, um, what is it, the spring, greenery <laughs> the spring greenery so I really hope that you guys enjoyed today's video um, if you're looking for any of the supplies they will be listed in the description box below I want to thank you so much for joining me and I will see you next time bye